We are the eyes and ears of the Human Rights Council. To speak for the victims of human rights violations. The special procedures of the Human Rights Council are the eyes and the ears of the Human Rights Council. With their independent assessment and the monitoring uh, work, what they do is bring an early warning system that works for the prevention of violations of human rights and at the same time they are able to bring to the Council the attention of new issues, thematic issues and also serious human rights situations in certain countries that bring to the attention of the Council for us uh, to work and help countries reverse those situations. They are an essential part of the system and a, a strong partner of the Council. Kofi Annan rightly said that special procedures are the crown jewel of the international human rights system. They are the watchdogs of the effective implementation of the UN human rights treaties and state commitment and pledges. They are part of what we call a, a, a spe spe special mandates, you know, set up by the UN. Who are appointed by the Human Rights Council to take up various functions. It can be a thematic expertise or it can be an expert who is appointed to cover a certain issue. But also a special procedure can be also a, a group of people or individual that is appointed to deal with a specific issue, or uh, important human rights issue that need uh, a particular attention. The idea is that independent experts are able to verify situations on the ground and translate them into agendas for political action in relation to human rights. To independently observe and to provide guidance to states about their human rights performance, what they're doing well, but where there's room for improvement in terms of how they take care of people. To remind them that they are part of an international community that have some certain value, that me and those value cannot be derogated. Either you are part of the international community or you are not. We all receive claims of human rights violations. We all carry out thematic research through which we provide advice to the international community about the human rights situations under our purview. And most importantly, we all carry out extensive activities of dialogue with states and non-state actors uh, across the board. I have so many activities, from particularly from advocacy, where I dialogue with governments together, I engage with civil society, and very importantly, of course, I speak to internally displaced persons themselves and host community. I also do a lot of reporting to the United Nations, particularly on very substantive themes like the last report, I gave to the General Assembly, which was on the prevention of arbitrary displacement. The Working Group on Arbitrary Detention has a unique function of uh, producing and issuing uh, opinions on situations of arbitrary detention around the world. So we do that as an opinion. We, uh, we issue confidential communications, urgent appeals and allegation letters to different states. We write deliberations, which are thematic products on different aspects of detention and, and deprivation of liberty. And uh, we also conduct two country visits every year to different states around the world upon their invitation. Being able to sit down as human beings as we all are and just to talk face to face. And that's what I love about country visits. And then you can go talk to the parliamentarians, um, the ju judiciary, the police, and then you can leave the capital, go to the field, and start meeting school directors, community leaders, IDPs, um, refugees. And so you really have this unique access to all the segments of the society. We also have a complaints mechanism, which is not very well known sort of outside of the human rights world called the communications procedure. Again, what does that mean? It means that individual communities, or we use the term rights holder, but people who might be victims of human rights abuses around the world. Maybe they're arbitrarily detained and in jail. Maybe they're an indigenous person or community that has been displaced from their land by a mining company. They can 
uh, write to the United Nations, to these independent experts and seek assistance. The impact of special procedures, this is where we have to look at to change the real lives of individuals and communities. And we do have the power to do so. And so I always encourage everybody to think of our roles as much more than meeting rooms and published reports, but it's about people who can be affected by our reports. The mandate also makes a difference when it comes to enabling protective legislation, that is to have laws and national legal frameworks that would actually provide the conditions for the protection of internally displaced persons. I think just raising awareness and calling attention to issues of global concern is part of the impact of the special procedures. You really have to know your area of expertise and you have to be able to communicate clearly about what is your objective, what are you searching, what do you want, and then you have to be a good listener. To be an effective independent expert, one must have not only the expertise demanded by the mandate, but also an empathy with the victims of the human rights violations that are the concern of your mandate. Openness is also uh, uh, important in building trust. I have dedicated my last 25 years defending human rights while world. So despite challenges, it's important to build maintain and restore hope. That's my daily commitment. And I think it's, it's that, it, that is fantastic. It's a, it's a calling to do that. Um, it's not something that everyone would do, I think, because it, it's of a voluntary nature. It's hard work. We're not paid. We do this as part of our personal obligation and, and really love, I think, of human rights and commitment to, to helping people. It really is, for the time you're doing it, if you're going to do it well, quite an all-consuming thing. And so I think for people who want for a period of their life, whether it's three years or six years, to drive an agenda and from start to finish kind of think boldly and to sort of think about the steps that they're going to execute on is, is amazing. The, the idea that I can make a difference through my assessment and reporting work uh, the idea that my experience and uh, expertise can serve CAR and its people. Uh, the conviction that uh, relaying uh, the voice of victims uh, uh, for me is very much important. It's such an important role to be a special rapporteur on a specific topic, right? It says that you are recognized as an authority and an expert, and that carries a lot of power and a lot of responsibility. So it's very rewarding to be, I think, recognized and to realize that you have the ability to have those important conversations, right, with states, for me, with companies, right, with, you know, with civil society. We need to have human rights and a core of building better. And special procedures are really uh, a critical component of building better.